Welcome back. This time we're talking about All the Money in the World, directed by Ridley Scott and telling the true story of the 1973 kidnapping of John Paul Getty III, grandson of the then richest man in the world, John Paul Getty. Now, I don't know exactly sure when this video will be going up, but unless something changes, All the Money in the World was the last film I saw in 2017. Um, there are still several other um, films that I need to see and I will see as well as several that um, will not be getting a wide release until in later into January um, So I'm still going to be seeing 2017 movies But this is the last film I saw in calendar year 2017 And it was definitely a good one to end the year on because this is a very well-made movie and an exceptionally well-acted movie now, obviously, there's no way to talk about this film without getting into, at least for a brief moment, um, about Kevin Spacey. Um, he was originally cast as John Paul Getty. He filmed all of his scenes. This film was essentially done. Um, and then he um, was caught in the um, ongoing Hollywood and beyond um, sexual harassment and assault scandal and this film looked briefly that it was going to be shelved and probably never see the light of day. Um, Ridley Scott was not satisfied with that, so with very little time, he recast the role with Christopher Plummer, who was someone that he had actually wanted originally, and apparently had actually read the script and was mildly prepared um, to come in um, on very short notice and refilm his scenes. That was done. Ridley um, Scott recut the film with um, Christopher Plummer um, in the role and the film made its release date. That is honestly amazing. Um, you can debate whether or not um, excising someone from a film is the right thing to do. That This is not where that debate's going to happen. What I will say is that Plummer's inclusion in this film is seamless. Um, I mean, I knew the story, I knew what had happened, I couldn't tell. Um, and Christopher Plummer is amazing in this role. Um, I will say it's honestly one of my favorite performances of the year. I'm not sure where it would rank, but he is really good as this very, um, very rich man who wants to spend very little money. Um, one last thing I will say is I was honestly surprised how much John Paul Getty is in this movie. Uh, when I heard that it was being reshot, re I assumed it was going to be a small number of scenes. No, um, I think I read somewhere that there was something like 22 scenes that had to get reshot, and it's probably close to a third of this movie. Um, it is absolutely amazing. But as far as the movie itself, it is also very, very good. It stars Michelle Williams as John Paul Getty III's uh, mother, and Mark Wahlberg as the man um, John Paul Getty hires to um, try to negotiate his grandson's release as long as those negotiations don't revolve any money changing hands and that's why this story is so famous is that john paul getty refused to pay the ransom um, the kidnappers were demanding originally 17 million dollars and he said very emphatically that he wasn't going to give them a cent um, in some ways, I'm not defending him. It does make some sense because, as he puts it, he has like 17 grandchildren. Um, and it would just be an invitation for all of them to get kidnapped. Um, but that's not the main reason why he wasn't doing it. Ridley Scott directs, once again, a very beautiful looking film. It definitely has that 70s look. Um, the production values are great. Um, it's a very interesting story. Um, I'm not sure how true to the actual events um, this is. Um, they do say at the end during the closing credits um, that certain events were fictionalized for dramatic effect. Um, I appreciate that they put that in there. Um, uh, um, like I said in my review for The Greatest Showman, um, sometimes films will pretend to be telling the true story and really change it up. If you're going to change real events, just own up to it. That way we can just enjoy the movie and know what we're getting. Just tell us, and, and for me at least, I'm fine with it. So I was really happy that they put that in there. I don't know what events um, were fictionalized. Um, I do believe the last 10 to 15 minutes 
um, not including the the just sort of the resolution scenes at the very end were pretty much fictionalized. That was one of the few times where it really felt more like a movie rather than real events being depicted in a movie. Um, it went a little overboard, kind of pulled me out just a little bit, um, but the tension was still there. Um, I purposely did not look um, up the actual events. I knew the basic story, um, but I didn't know the specifics going in. And like I said with um, Darkest Hour, I pretty much knew how it was going to end, but the film does not give up the tension. Um, it, it was definitely edge of your seat over a lot of this movie. Um, and I guess if you don't know how it ends, that's going to be even higher. Um, it's a very well-crafted film. Michelle Williams is excellent. Another phenomenal performance. Mark Wahlberg is great. At, um, I would just say he just didn't stand out um, between, having to be between Michelle Williams and Christopher Plummer. So not taking anything away from his performance, it just it just didn't shine as much as those two. And while we're talking about performances, I also want to give a shout out to Charlie Plummer, no relation to Christopher Plummer, who plays John Paul Getty III. Um, he has to play a very harried and traumatized character in this movie and does that very, very well. I, it was another great performance. Really, the entire cast in this is, is excellent, but those three, Michelle Williams, Christopher Plummer, and Charlie Plummer, were definitely the standouts. This is a very interesting story told really, really well in film. Um, and if you're an, at all interested in this story or if you saw the trailers and thought this film would be one that you wouldn't want to go see, definitely go see it. It is well worth the trip. Um, but for now, I'm going to turn this over to you. If you've seen All the Money in the World, what did you think about it? And what did you think of Christopher Plummer's inclusion as far as how seamless it was? I really don't want to get into the debate on whether it should have happened or not. But if you want to, definitely comment below and, and I will respond. But I'm more curious if you felt it was as seamless as I did. As always, you can subscribe to my channel, check out some of my other reviews. And until next time, I'll see you at the movies.